I'm Bob Duhamel, and today I am going to answer the question, does Ohm's law apply to diodes? And the reason I'm asking this question is because I found many places on the internet, and I assume this is possibly even in textbooks, that say that Ohm's law does not apply to diodes. And the justification for this is that the relationship between voltage and current in a diode is non-linear. Let me explain what I mean by that. So let's draw a graph of the voltage and current relationship of a resistor. So here's our voltage on the horizontal scale and our current on the vertical scale. And let's make this some nice easy numbers. Let's put one volt, two volts, three volts, four volts, five volts, etc. And over here we'll do increments of single amps. One, two, three, four, and we'll put five up here because we have five volts down there. Now let's say I have a one ohm resistor. So if I apply one volt to a one ohm resistor, what is my current going to be? Well, if I apply one volt to a one ohm resistor, I'm going to get one amp of current. So my relationship goes right there. One volt gives us one amp. Now what happens if I put two volts across a one ohm resistor? Well, two volts across two ohms gives me two amps, and that'll put my dot right about there. Three volts will give me three amps. Four will give me four amps. My uh, lines here aren't perfect, so I'll just have to redraw that to make it perfect. But anyway, what I would get is a straight line. <laughs> That's a pretty terrible straight line, but you get what I'm getting at. One volt, one amp. Two volts, two amps. Three volts, three amps. Four volts, four amps. And that gives me a straight line on this graph, and that means I have a linear relationship. But what happens with a diode? Well, the diode acts differently. Let's see if we have a forward bias diode. So let me draw that here. Here is the symbol for a diode. And if I put my highest voltage or most positive voltage here, my most negative voltage there, that diode is reverse bias. This is called the cathode. That's called the anode. And if I bias it like this, positive to negative, it's going to act like an open circuit. It's not going to conduct. But if I reverse that, positive to the anode, negative to the cathode, then the diode is going to conduct, but it doesn't conduct like a switch. It's nonlinear. So if I put, well, I'm gonna to have to change these to tenths of a volt. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5, I have to go all the way up to about 0.8 volts. Could go up to a whole volt, but uh, six, seven, there we go. And we'll call these milliamps over here. So this is volts, tenths of a volt, and we'll call these milliamps. Although this is going to be a rather loose relationship here. But the idea is that if I put a tenth of a volt across a diode, I'm going to get a very small current. Almost nothing because of the nature of the diode. If I put two tenths of a volt, I'm going to probably double my current. Pretty much double it. But it's going to be a very small current. So... It's sort of acting like a resistor right now. It's acting like a very, very high resistance resistor. Voltage. If I put 0 0.3, I'm going to have three times the current. So I'm getting a linear relationship all the way up to about here. But right about here, things start to change. I'm going to get a little bit of a higher current. So I'm getting a bit of a curve here. And I get to 0.6, it's going to be curving a lot more. This is assuming this diode's made of silicon. And by the time I get to 0.7 volts, I'm probably going to be something like that. And it, this will continue on. And as I put more voltage across it, I'm going to get a cascading of current where this goes through the roof, basically. So this is nonlinear. It looks linear here, but then it changes. It's actually logarithmic. So we have a nonlinear relationship across a diode. And people say that because we have that nonlinear relationship, that Ohm's law does not apply to a diode because we need that linear relationship. So I've done some research and I have not been able to find any scientific authoritative source that says nonlinearity invalidates Ohm's law. So does Ohm's law apply to diodes? Well, let's take a look at what we have here. If we go to, let's say, about 0.6 volts here in this particular uh, arrangement, and let's say these are milliamps. So I have six tenths of a volt and one milliamp. 
If I put that into Ohm's law, I'm going to get 600 ohms. That's a valid number. Would this act like a 600 ohm resistor? Well, at 6 tenths of a volt, it would act like a 600 ohm resistor. But if I change my voltage, it's going to change that resistance. So if I get up to about 7 tenths of a volt, now we're getting up to, oh, about 3.5 milliamps. So at this point, we're going to be at about 200 ohms. So I'm getting valid numbers here by applying Ohm's law. And we would find if I use the power formula of power equals I squared R, I would get a valid power for this diode here. So I applied Ohm's law to get a resistance at that particular voltage. And then I applied the power formula and got a legitimate useful power. So I did get a useful result by applying Ohm's law to that diode. The only thing is that I have a nonlinear relationship between voltage and current. And also in electronics and engineering, the nonlinearity between voltage and current, or the linearity between voltage and current, is used to describe whether or something is a resistor or not. For example, let's take the tunnel diode. I'm going to just redraw this real quickly. A tunnel diode do our voltage and our current again, has a curve something like this. If we reverse bias it, it acts different from a regular diode. It acts pretty much like a resistor when it's reverse bias. So I'm drawing my graph. Let's draw some lines here. So there's voltage and current. So that's going to be negative voltage and current going the opposite direction. As my voltage crosses zero, I continue having this linear relationship between voltage and current. But eventually that starts to curve over and we get a curve that looks something like that. I described the tunnel diode in a different video. So right here, it's acting like a resistor. And so they say it's acting like a resistor here. It's resistive. And over here, we have a very interesting relationship where as I increase my voltage, my current goes down. And so we have a name for that. Increasing voltage should make the current go up. Here, increasing the voltage makes the current go down, and we call that negative resistance. And then it makes this curve here, and from about here, it starts looking like a regular diode again. So we're going to be at about you know, 0.7 volts right about there somewhere. So. We are saying, well, this is acting like a resistor because it's linear, but it's not acting like a resistor here because it's nonlinear. And then here it's, yeah, it's linear again, sort of acting like a resistor again. So it's described not as violating Ohm's law, but being either resistive or non-resistive, or in this case, negative resistive. So we have weird things going on, but once again, how do we find out what these resistances are? By applying voltage and current and applying Ohm's law, and we can calculate what that resistance is at that particular voltage. Another example is the relationship between voltage and current in a field effect transistor. In that case, we get another interesting curve. Once again, voltage and current. And here, the curve depends on, well, let's take a quick look at the device here. I'm not going to explain it in detail. I do that in another video, but basically, this device acts like a voltage controlled variable resistance. And so if I change the voltage, I change this resistance. Not quite, because the curve is something like this. At one voltage, I get a voltage and current curve that looks like that. And notice that I get a flat line here. What does that mean? That means that my resistance is changing with my voltage so that my current stays the same. So I have a, a region where it is a voltage controlled current source, basically. And if I change that control voltage, I get another curve across the variable resistance that gives us a higher current. So here I'm changing my voltage all over the place, but my current does not change. So it's, once again, a voltage controlled current source. Uh, if I draw the FET here again, just to explain what I'm doing here. So I'm saying that my voltage across here, that's this voltage, at a certain voltage here, control voltage, I'm going to get a certain current regardless of my voltage from here to here. 
But look what happens here. We have a straight line there. I didn't draw this quite right. That should be straighter and then curves. And then I increase this voltage more and I get another straight line and then it curves over. Increase this voltage again, I get another straight line and then it curves over. And that's probably more too much of a curve for a field effect transistor. There we go, there we go a little gentler curve. And so we have a region here where it acts like a voltage controlled current source. And that may not be the best way to say it, but that gives us an idea. The voltage here means that regardless of the voltage I have across here, I get the same current. But in this area here, the voltage here makes it act like different resistors. High resistance, lower resistance, lower resistance, and lower resistance. So we have a region where it acts like a voltage controlled variable resistor and a region where it acts like a voltage controlled current source. And then of course the nonlinear region here where it's changing over once again, the nonlinearity does not violate Ohm's law and we can calculate a particular resistance at a particular voltage by applying this voltage to this current and once again, this voltage is the voltage from here to here. That's the control voltage and the current would be the current flowing through there. So we apply this voltage to that current, we can find a resistance at a particular control voltage. So in scientific and engineering practice, we differentiate between a resistor and other devices by the linearity or nonlinearity, but I can find nothing that says that the nonlinearity invalidates Ohm's law. So if we go back to our diode curve, Just make a quick drawing of it here. Here's about one volt. And we have some current over here. And uh, well, I'll just leave these numbers off. We just wanna look at the basic curve here. It's going to do something like that. And so at different voltages, I have different currents. So at this voltage, I have that current. At this voltage, I have that current. And so I essentially have a voltage controlled variable resistor. And this property can be exploited. For example, you could use a diode in the feedback loop of a RC oscillator to make a voltage controlled variable oscillator. I'm not sure exactly how I would do that, but I could approach that and I can make it work. How practical it would be, I don't know. I have not studied that particular circuit. And another application could be in a feedback loop to have voltage control, perhaps the gain of an amplifier and a, maybe an automatic gain control. You could exploit the changes in resistance due to voltage in the feedback of the amplifier to change the gain as the voltage somewhere else changes. So we do get a meaningful resistance at different voltages with this diode and we can exploit that. So in the end, does Ohm's law apply to diodes? Well, if you can apply a scientific principle to something and get a useful result that can make something happen in the real world, then that applies. And here we can apply Ohm's law to a diode at different voltages and get a useful result that we can use to design a circuit that works in the real world, then Ohm's law does apply to diodes. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.